Going in for a 20-week ultrasound is exciting, scary, and everything else in between. But imagine hearing the news that your unborn child has something wrong with his spine and that something with spina bifida. On this episode of the Live, Learn, and Play podcast, we sit down with an Arkansas Children's Ambassador, Evan Lee, and his mom, Amanda, as they recount the stories of Evan's life from diagnosis to how they're doing now, Evan's ambassadorship with Arkansas Children's Foundation, and his future as he grows into adolescence. We will also discuss the recent designation that Arkansas Children's received for our Spina Bifida Clinic and how Arkansas Children's will continue to provide unprecedented child health defined and delivered for kids like Evan. During these difficult times with COVID-19, please wash your hands, wear your mask, and practice social distancing. We are all in this together. Please like and subscribe to the Live, Learn, and Play podcast, and always be on the lookout for new episodes wherever you get your podcast. Now, here's Evan and Amanda. Welcome back to the Live, Learn, and Play podcast. I'm Rebecca Brockman, and today I'm joined by Amanda and Evan Lee. They are here to talk about uh, a recent designation that our Spina Bifida Clinic here at Arkansas Children's received. Evan has been a patient here for a while, and we were talking before recording. I have watched Evan grow up um, in uh, in the way we've seen the pictures on our marketing material. So in my mind, I thought he was four or five, but he is actually 12. So it was it's neat to see uh, him and watch him grow up through pictures. So welcome to you both today. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you. We appreciate it. So we're going to start first with mom, but Evan, if you have any thoughts, feel free, okay. to, feel free to jump in. Okay. Before we talk about the designation, which of course is, is exciting uh, for Evan and for patients of, of that clinic, but we want to hear more a little bit about yourself and your family. So please share. Well, I am a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for the last 16 years. And I am married to Brian, and together we have four children. Will and Wyatt are 20, and they're twins. And I have a daughter who is 16, and then there is Evan that is 12. Well, welcome. And you are um, from Northwest Arkansas. Yes. Right. And Evan, would you add anything to that? Uh, I don't think so. What is it like being the youngest of four siblings? It. It's kind of, it's weird because like you don't get to be the boss of the house anytime. You don't get to be the boss of the house any anytime. Except maybe when all the older kids are out of the house, then you're the boss. So Amanda, if you could take us back, even, so Evan's 12 now, but take us back to when you first uh, came to Arkansas Children's and how that relationship started. Well, um, the, my first visit at Arkansas Children's was when I was pregnant with Evan, I think I had like a visit before before he was born. And I remember Dr. O'Brien walking me around and showing me things and talking to me about spina bifida because I didn't know anything. I had no education. All I knew is that I was going to have this baby that had spina bifida. And I don't remember a whole lot about the visit. I just remember being on campus and him showing me around and trying to educate me about spina bifida. So did you find out about Evan's uh, spina bifida during an ultrasound or how did you find out? I went for my 20-week ultrasound and at the time um, they knew something was wrong and so they called me and said that I needed to come to Little Rock to a um, high-risk doctor and um, that something was wrong with with my baby. And they wouldn't really give me a whole lot of details, but just that um, I was at high risk and something was wrong with his spine. And then so after you had Evan, what was that process like and when did you you start visiting Arkansas Children's? So Evan was born at 38 weeks at uh, UAMS and they transported him immediately to, um, to Children's. 
and there he um, had surgeries, uh, uh, surgery to close the opening in his back right away, and I was still in the hospital. So as soon as I was discharged, I you know, came straight to Arkansas Children's, where we spent the first probably three months of his life. And what are some early memories or stories that you remember from your first, from your time in the beginning here? Um, I just remember how compassionate and caring everyone was and how positive. I probably don't remember as much as I should, but I do remember that it was a very nurturing, loving place. Awesome. Well, that's good that that is what you remember, that that is what what stands out. Um, Tell us a little bit about the Spina Bifida team and who uh, you uh, see here at Arkansas Children's. Sure. So Evan sees a neurosurgeon, Dr. Ogil. He sees um, a rehab doctor, Dr. Hobart, who is just, I can't say enough nice things about her. There's been a nurse that has been with us who has been through been with us since day one, and that's Becky Braggy. Uh, she's phenomenal. And then there's the PT team, the occupational therapy team. We see Dr. Patel Patel with urology. Um, several different physicians and a team that all work together for Evan's plan of care. Okay, Evan, so you, um, your spina bifida team really is more like family because you have grown up here. So tell us more about some of your favorite doctors or nurses or some of some stories. Over the past 12 years, there has been amazing doctors, one that, um, that has, very, has really helped me. His name is uh, Dr. Richter. He is an ear, nose, and throat doctor. He um, figured that he diagnosed me with uh, sleep apnea. Another doctor is um, Dr. Patel. He is my urologist. Um, he basically just checks up on my bowel and bladder. And then my neurosurgeon, Dr. Ogil, she has been there for me since pretty much day one of my life. She has done a lot of surgeries for me. She watches my brain. I have a shunt, and she watches that. Another doctor is um, Dr. Hobart. She is a rehab doctor. I see her two or three times a year. That's awesome. You sound like you could go into the medical field with all of the terms you're using. My dream. What do you want to be when you grow up, Evan? Well... I'm aiming towards a physician. I want to be, um, I either want to be a brain surgeon or just, um, just like a small surgery surgeon. Like a very, like a shunt revision surgery surgeon. And uh, I just want to be a surgeon. That's awesome. Well, I think you're on your way. Um, you know, when we, when our audience hears about a designation, that's nice. Like that's, it's good for clinics to get designations, but especially for your family, what does it mean to have a spina bifida designated, uh, the designation here at Arkansas Children's? What does that mean? Well, I mean, my goodness, it's, it's, uh, you know, a premier place to be for children with spina bifida. Um, I was reading and I believe there's only 31 hospitals in the United States and then so to have the hospital close to home is just fabulous. And I also, um, you do you come to Arkansas Children's for care, but then in uh, a couple years ago, about two years ago, we opened Arkansas Children's Northwest. So what has that new hospital there, it's not really new now, it's been up there a couple years, what does that, how does that help you and your family? Well, obviously, we don't have to take the three-hour drive down here to Little Rock, but um, it's it's just so convenient, and we're very blessed to have such a wonderful hospital just right down the road from us. So do you, um, so you still come here for Arkansas Children's, and then how often do you go to ACNW? Usually, we go maybe two or three times a year um, for, for appointments up there. Um, 
not near as much as we did when Evan was an infant. So it makes it nice not to have to travel so much now. So the Spina Bifida Association recently released a free smartphone app that includes care guidelines, a symptom checker, and a place to record symptoms. Amanda, have you heard of this app? You know, Evan and I downloaded it um, last night. I had no idea that there was an app for Spina Bifida. So I'm real thank you for, for letting me know that. And we kind of glanced at it a little bit and how awesome. Good. And I'm glad to hear that. Um, and we'll definitely add some more information in the podcast. But the Spina Bifida Association recently released a free smartphone app that includes care guidelines, a symptom check a symptom checker, and a place to record symptoms. So I know you just downloaded it, but so far, what do you think of of the app? I think it's great to have an app that you can go to and look at your symptoms and kind of figure out what's going on with you and before you even call the physician. What are some other resources that um, are available for you and your family um, around spina bifida here in Arkansas? You know, um, I, Becky... Um, the nurse at the Spina Bifida Clinic, she is a great resource and has given me many, lots of information regarding uh, Spina Bifida uh, resources. There's websites, there's, you know, Arkansas Children's Hospital. Um, There's also, Evan is in, um, he goes to camp yearly at Camp Aldersgate. They have a Spina Bifida camp that a week. And so, you know, just Meeting those, all the spina bifida kids and families has been just excellent. So between meeting uh, people that have the same issues as Evan and websites, there's a spina bifida uh, association of America. There's spina bifida of Arkansas. There's some Facebook pages regarding children that have um, issues dealing with spina bifida um, on there as well. So there's quite a few resources there's also the the spinal cord commission um you know obviously spina bifida affects the brain and the spinal cord so there's also that as well okay that's good to hear and also i we cannot let let you leave without talking about you being an ambassador so we want to hear about that experience they're taking nominations for ambassadors so it's perfect timing so this is your commercial for potential ambassador families why would you tell them to nominate and become an ambassador? I would choose for people to nominate and become an ambassador because I think it's a good way to get to know people. I just think the healthcare, uh, ambassadors help with healthcare, they support the healthcare teams. What about you, Mom? What has the um, ambassador experience been like for you? Oh, goodness. It is such an incredible opportunity to meet so many people and to meet so many generous people that are willing to, and it's in their, you know, it's in their heart. They want to donate to Arkansas Children's Hospital to help all these children that need health care in the state. So heartwarming, um, just in I can't say enough wonderful things about Arkansas Children's and the donors. Um, It is such an eye-opening experience to be a part of and to see it. And I'm very, very, very grateful for Arkansas Children's Hospital and all the uh, donors, the people that champion children. Um, Gosh, I don't know what we would do without them. I'm sure throughout the 12 years you've become more than you're more than just a parent. You're an advocate now. Have you, have you seen your role change as a mom? Absolutely, yes, very much so. Um, I'm a very big advocate of Arkansas Children's Hospital and willing and excited to have whatever opportunities come our way. Um, It's just something that Evan and I both enjoy. We love being a part of uh, doing what we can to get the word out, donations, health care, whatever we need to do to help is my passion. 
That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you both. Um, summer is here. So what are, I guess, kind of a closing question. What are some of your plans for the summer? And looking ahead, what, do you, what are some of your plans? Not a whole lot. Kind of going to lay it low this summer. Keep our mask on and try to prevent getting the coronavirus or giving it to someone if, we're, if we happen to have it. So uh, wearing mask and then just trying to enjoy the warm weather. So we know life looks a little bit different for everybody, but what are you as a family doing to stay healthy and safe during this time? Um, we're just, we're staying very safe. We're not going, um, we're not going much of anywhere. And we make sure to wear our mask and stay away from anyone that happens to be sick and, and try to enjoy the outside and all the opportunities Arkansas has out there. Okay, Evan, so since you are at home more, what do you like to do for fun during your free time now that it's summer? Well, I like to play a lot of video games. Uh, I like playing Fortnite and uh, just staying inside and uh, I like to go outside sometimes when I'm in the mood for it. And I ride my bike, swim, yeah, I just do, I just do swim therapy, PT, OT. Well, Evan and Amanda, Evan, we're glad you're staying safe at home, playing Fortnite um, and outside when you can, when it's not too hot. Um, we, ap- we appreciate both of your time today um, talking about the Spina Bifida uh, Association care partner designation that we recently received, but most importantly, just the care that you have received during Evan's lifetime here at Arkansas Children's, uh, just to hear about the cert- the different doctors and nurses that have made a difference in your lives and in your family's lives. So thank you both for your time today, and thank you for listening. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. And um, thank you to all of Evan's doctors, nurses, all of his care team, anyone that has ever been involved in Evan's care. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So I just I just want to say the same thing to all my doctors, to all my people that support me through this time, and I'm just hoping that we get back to a happy, healthy place. Once again, thank you to Amanda and Evan for coming by to talk about their family's growth and strength during trying times. It was just awesome to listen to their courage as Evan continues to blaze trails and be a role model for kids with spina bifida and beyond. A huge shout out to the Spina Bifida Clinic and team here at Arkansas Children's for their designation and for being champions for children so that they can continue to help kids like Evan be better today and healthier tomorrow. That's it for this episode of the Live, Learn, and Play podcast. We'll be back with a brand new episode soon, so don't miss out. Like, subscribe, and rate the Live, Learn, and Play podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to stay safe. Wash your hands, wear your masks, and social distance. We will get through this difficult time together. Talk to you soon.